Ooh. And that, my friends, is Newton's second law in action. Pretty amazing stuff, huh? Please tell me that the quiet I hear behind me is a stunned silence brought on by my clever instructional methodology and the complexity and dynamic beauty of physics. Nope. They haven't heard a word you've said. <sighs> it's raining outside. And in my soul. It's just a little rain. But Amar was supposed to teach us how to break dance during recess today. He was going to show us all his funky fresh moves. He even brought cardboard. <sighs> Jeez, are all kids this dramatic? Ahem. And need I remind you of your goth phase when you were younger? Oh my. Okay, I like to think of it as my awesome phase, but yes, I guess drama is par for the course. Why does it have to rain? Why? 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 The water cycle, of course. Clouds are made up of water vapor. Once an empty cloud fills up with water from the ocean, it rains. And then, when the sun comes out and the air gets warm, the water vapor evaporates and the rain stops. Just like that? Just like that. You're the smartest person I know. <gasps> well, well, well. I do believe we have a case of misinformation on our hands. The smartest person I know? Seriously? Come now, dear. Let's not let our egos rule the day. I mean, they don't really know that many people at their age. Oh, come on, love, I'm just having a go. You're still the most knowledgeable person they know. Thanks, Terry. And you're one of the most knowledgeable globes I know. Yes. Flattery will get you everywhere, darling. How can Dimitri think that clouds just fill up with water from the ocean? You mean, he's wrong? Partly. Clouds can form anywhere that air cools. A drop in air temperature, no matter where you are, causes water vapor to condense. Once it cools to the point of saturation, the molecules of water in the air form tiny droplets of water, or ice, that make up the clouds. Inside the cloud, the droplets collide with each other, coalescing into larger and larger droplets until they become heavy enough to fall to the ground in the form of rain, snow, sleet, or hail. The common misconception that clouds only form over the ocean most likely comes from incorrect or incomplete understandings of phase changes. Roll the film! Roll the film? Oh, good heavens! Must I do everything myself? I've seen this one before. Yes, it's everyone's favorite water cycle diagram. Ah, just watch as the crisp white snow on the mountaintops melts into water then runs into the ocean, where it is lifted like a ballerina up into a cloud, and then released again onto the land to begin the process again. Nature. Meh. If we want our students to understand that water vapor comes from a variety of sources, like rivers, lakes, and living things, we need to show them multiple models that feature different parts of the system. If only we had such a model. Darling, did you think I wouldn't come prepared? Roll the film! Oh, bugger. I'll just do it. Whoa, this is, uh, different. Of course it is. This diagram shows how water travels up through plants and trees and is released from their leaves as water vapour. That water vapor feeds clouds, causing rain that in turn feeds the trees and the cycle begins again. Transpiration at its finest. 
Indeed. New diagram. No more misconception. Problem solved. My work here is done. If you're working, why isn't my film rolling? I'm afraid the misconceptions about the water cycle go far beyond that, dear chap. Take a look at this. Yes, we all know that when water is heated, it turns into water vapor, then disappears. Poof! We often use an example of heating water like this as a concrete way to show students about evaporation. But many of them think that water can only evaporate in heat. Meanwhile, they think they're seeing water vapor. But water vapor is invisible! Exactly. What they're really seeing is condensed water in the form of a cloud. But since many students haven't quite grasped the particle model of matter yet, the idea that water is made of molecules that behave differently during various phase changes, they understand where water goes, but not necessarily how it got there. This is depressing. Are you going to break out your black eyeliner and trash bag dress again? Hey, I rock that goth look and don't you forget it. Sure. At least we have a starting point. I'm chuffed to bits that I could help. But how can I make the water cycle more concrete in their daily lives? We need to think of a way to show the students that water, while sometimes invisible, is always present. Hmm. <gasps> That's it! What's it? What did I miss? Why am I not part of this collective light bulb moment? You've clearly got this covered, Isabella. And I'm late for my afternoon constitutional. Ta-ta for now. What does she mean clearly? Why am I always the last one of the party? Watch and learn. Watch and learn. You know, you could still learn some fly breakdancing moves. How? 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 By using the water cycle. <laughs> Ms. Reyes, there isn't an ocean here, so there's just no way. Actually, Dimitri, humans are a part of the water cycle, too. Whenever we breathe, we release water into the air. You mean I'm contributing to the rain? In a way, yes. I knew I had rain in my soul. And so does Dimitri. Oh, yeah. And so do I. <sighs> I just breathed out invisible water into the air, and it condensed on the window. Now I can use that condensation to draw whatever I want, like how to do a perfect head spin in three simple steps. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Whoa. You're the smartest person I know, Miss Reyes. And I'm back. To discover more about how kids learn science and the types of misconceptions they might have, visit us online at scienceeducation.si.edu slash goodthinking.